Hello folks, welcome back. Uh, so for part two, it was a case of, uh, there's the structure we built uh, yesterday. Uh, and today it's just gonna be a case of adding some detail. Uh, so basically uh, it's gonna be using this material. So this is just a box. Uh, basically I've marked along the edges there and scored them with the scissors just to get some decent folds. And then this piece itself, is going to uh, is going to be really use some of this this technique really of using their uh, pencil and then soot and charcoal to see what kind of effect I can get onto this and then this is going to cover the main structure there so uh, and then after that I'll be doing some uh, extra detailing around the edges and also uh, across here in places as well and of course there'll be a wall part at the top here and then it's just going to be a case of looking at some different materials really in different uh, uses and I found some of this stuff uh, which is the kind of thing you get uh, bread from from the co-op and things like that and I just thought it's possibly uh, may look quite effective as slate for slate roofs or also possibly for road surfaces as well uh, so yeah I'm going to uh, see what that looks like uh, and carry on put this into position and then it'll be a case of marking it up and I'll bring you back in a bit bye for now Okay, folks, welcome back. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a laborious task, but it didn't take too long, actually, probably only about 10 minutes in reality. Uh, so it's not too uh, too difficult, but basically I just used an old pencil there, quite a solid uh, tip, and then I've drawn straight lines across at the top and then just done them by hand. I've not measured them out or anything. I've just done it all by eye, but hopefully that should be a good start for a stone viaduct um, so what I'll do is I'll fix it onto position so we can have a look at it as it is now uh, and then afterwards I'm going to be doing some weathering like that and then uh, I'll set it up again and just see how it looks uh, and then after that we can do some more uh, detailing around the structure top plates and things like that you know the stones on the top that will have a slight overhang and then around the edges there as well to just tidy it all up so yeah, I'll uh, get on with that and then bring you back in a bit. Bye for now. Okay, folks, so uh, I've just attached that just loosely, just with some pegs at the moment. It's just so I can really get the uh, general look of it and check that I'm happy with it before I sort of spend any time kind of weathering it. But uh, I think that looks reasonably okay. As I say, I've not measured it out specifically. I've not gone over scale or anything like that. I don't really think it merits it. Um, but yeah, just with the overall look, that should be satisfactory and it'll just be a case of weathering it. Uh, another thing I've done is just using the same technique of measuring out and scoring. Um, you've got the piece there that's going to be for the retaining wall with the embankment behind it. And again, I'm just using the same technique just to basically cover that so we've got a nice edge there. Uh, and then I'll be doing that as well with the, the stonework. So yeah, I'll bring you back in a bit. Bye for now. Okay, so uh, I've continued that basically. Um, I've put this little design along the bottom as well, just a bit of variety. And there's also going to be something uh, along here around the top. Uh, another another band, but that's going to be uh, standing proud from the main structure really, just to add a bit of detail as you get with a lot of these viaducts. And that's going to run across the other spans as well. And then at the top, there's going to be... Uh, another protruding bit section of stone as well that kind of uh, differentiates the wall bit at the top to the actual structural bit below uh, and of course I've continued to do these again just scoring it folding it over uh, and I'm quite happy with that uh, so next it's just going to be a case of marking out individual odd random ones uh, for a bit more uh, detailing and then it'd be a case of using the soot to uh, just get an overall uh, sort of spoky uh, sooty effect to it really and a bit of variety so it doesn't stand out quite as much uh, in this stone colour so uh, yeah I'll get on with that and I will bring you back in a bit bye for now okay folks welcome back uh, I thought I'd just bring you into a different room that's a bit lighter because uh, we've got some of this typical bank holiday Monday weather here in the UK uh, rain and wind which we get a lot of the time uh, so yeah, this is what I've done now. So basically, we've got a bit more light in this room. Uh, what I wanted to do is just use some soot and ash 
uh, which is really a lot of the real thing, I suppose, that builds up and that, that sticks with it from kind of the Industrial Revolution. And what I've done is I've just used that from the fire, from a, a log burner, uh, and then just basically uh, smeared it in different areas and then just used my finger to uh, to rub it in and highlighted some uh, particular stones more than others as if it's some of the natural colour. Uh, in this corner, just from observation really, but I noticed that when the two are going to go together like this, a lot of the time you'll get a lot of damp and you'll get a lot of... Um, where there's lack of airflow in the corners. So what I've done is I've really concentrated on that area to try and just get it really. I've got just got a piece of charcoal and basically just rubbed it down the edge there and then basically just kind of brushed it away a little bit so you've not got such a solid line uh, to try and merge it in. But that's the general effect at the moment. So hopefully that's gonna look fairly realistic. But let me know in the comments what you think. Um, what your own experience is, I suppose, whether you prefer using brick paper or plastic card, or whether you like to kind of do some of your own stuff. It, it didn't take as long as I thought, really, this. So, you know, probably 20 minutes or so. So it's not it's not a massive project. Yeah, it is a bit boring, but I suppose you can just think your own thoughts while you're doing it and concentrate on it. But hopefully, I think once I've built up the, uh, you know, built some profile into it and some profile around the edges here, and then put some top boards, well, or big top solid pieces of stone, I suppose, a bit like the ones you get at Peak Forest, on the top there. That's going to come out a bit as well. And it should create a bit of shadow as well. And then possibly, I don't know yet, possibly uh, might add to it some greenery as well, as if it's not, you know, currently completely maintained on some of the ledges. And also potentially some varnish to just perhaps show some where you've got some water running down or leaking down from the ballast level and maybe it's leaking out of here or something but those are all the real fine details and then of course it's going to be a case of you know um, making it fitting in with the other underneath the other one i find that some of these uh, structures they're actually brick underneath so i think i'm going to leave that as it is rather than have the the uh, stone apart from the legs maybe have the legs going in brick on the inside but uh, yeah, we'll see how, it, see how it looks and see how it pans out. So uh, I'll bring you back in a bit. Bye for now. Hello folks, welcome back. Uh, so I thought I'd just bring you back for another little update really of uh, progress as we just have a look at the uh, sapper there, the light allows. It's a Backman's uh, model that I'm uh, very pleased with. Okay, so uh, viaduct wise, so let's just have a look. We'll look out first of all, so we can see what we're looking at. There's the bridge. Okay, and this house here is gonna go something like that. It's gonna be built up with different materials and things. And then that's just looking in. So basically uh, I wanted to have a retaining wall that's going to go something a bit like that um, and then the embankment will be built up around that to the side when it's done properly um, and then that's going to be the tunnel through where the road goes through possibly a pavement on one side as well uh, and then basically this one is going to be a uh, some kind of premises inside there possibly a shop or cafe Something like that, not 100%, but got a few ideas uh, coming together for that one as I think on. And I'm probably going to build it with uh, a glass front, to be honest. Um, so you can actually look inside and see a little bit of that premises inside. Um, basically, the stonework at the moment, there's no profile to that. It's just purely been done with uh, pencil and then soot on the outside, as I think I may have told you. And I've just tried to darken it a little bit in the uh, sides but i'm possibly going to do more weathering it's not fixed in position yet so i'm going to see how that locks and possibly do bits of more weathering and then obviously there's going to be the uh the parts going around the stonework around the edge there and then also stonework running across there that will be profiled out definitely uh, and also there's going to be top slabs put on it as well so hopefully the, the color at least anyway should be a fairly realistic uh, colour, if not a bit darker. I thought that stone worked, worked quite well. Uh, and then also what I've been doing as well, 
is just uh, putting the cork under there. So I'm going to have one layer of cork and that's probably about five mil, I think, thickness. Uh, so I can build up the profile when ballasting. And the reason I wanted to just put that on now was just to gauge the view that you're going to get of the trains when they're going over. And that's going to be a fairly realistic view. And then as the bridge comes along here, that's going to turn into a girder view and it's going to be much lower there. So it's going to probably be railing. So you've got a really good view of the whole train as it crosses the river. Um, I just keep coming up with different little ideas for things. Uh, and it's really keeping my eyes open really as to different materials that you come across every day and what they can be used for. And I found some of this material, which has struck me as very much, a, I don't know if you can see in the light, but very much a slate colour. So I thought that possibly uh, I could use that, incorporate that either on some of the, 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 uh, the roofs for the buildings um, and possibly as well, possibly even, uh, a bit too bright there, possibly sort of road uh, as well. So if that's uh, ironed out, uh, straightened out, then uh, that could possibly be a good tarmac for certain roads as well. So yeah, that's just a, a brief look at, to give you an idea of how that structure is going to be. The embankment's going to be built up and obviously this material I've just painted, it's a very rough version really, just to get an idea of what the landscape looks like. Um, but that will be uh, properly done with, uh, with more layers and scatter material, etc. Um, as I uh, progress with it. But yeah, I thought I'd give you a nice look in the, uh, in the light. That marvellous rail freight distribution, the Sapper. If anyone wants to see, I've done a review on that as well uh, on one of the uh, videos. So I'll uh, carry on and uh, bring you back in a bit. Bye for now. Okay folks, welcome back. Uh, so just as a quick update, um, I've made some of these uh, basically like those big stone slabs you get uh, on the top of bridges and stuff. Uh, so I thought they look reasonably okay. Um, and then also an idea for this property as well below. Um, I wondered about whether to have that uh, as a potential kind of tourist information stroke cafe uh, where you've got the white walls on one side where I'd put a door in there, the uh, wooden flooring perhaps and then basically uh, one of those kind of um, print wallpapers uh, advertising the uh, various tours and trips you can go on. So that was just an idea. Uh, obviously for the, uh, when I get to do the town module that one will be more uh, industrial kind of uh, area, but I thought with this being modelled loosely on the uh, Peak District, it's quite a tourist spot. Uh, so I thought maybe a tourist information stroke cafe might be uh, good with maybe a small seating area outside. And then these additional properties that are gonna be set back a bit like that. So yeah, these uh, things are quite easy to make. Basically, it's just cardboard that's been cut um, and then uh, wrapped in insulate, insulation tape just to bond it together. Uh, and basically, we use this material, which is just like a slate colored paper, uh, to wrap it uh, and then just cut them into the various sizes. And when they glue, or you don't really need to even do the, as you can see it, don't, uh, there we go. Yeah, don't really, really need to do the end because when they actually push together, you've still got them that little bit of uh, variety with them. And uh, but uh, yeah, thought they should look quite good. So yeah, I'll crack on with this and I'll uh, bring you back in a bit. Bye for now. Okay, welcome back. So uh, yeah, just uh, put some of these edging stones on now. 
which I'm quite pleased with the uh, the effect of that. Generally, colour wise, they look very similar to the ones that you get, and it just adds a bit of contrast really to the uh, viaduct itself. Um, and then just to show you this one, basically this is a little uh, insert room and it's just uh, basically just cut out a card uh, with a tourist information leaflet there that I've just uh, used on the edge of that. And then it's just, you can see, just secured around the back so that we've got a, a floor, no, no light kind of gets in underneath it. And then that insert just fits into into there eventually. So yeah, a bit like like that. So we'll have a, a room with a glass front on the uh, front there and a door and then possibly a door set into the back as well, maybe a table in there, a couple of chairs or something. Okay, folks, welcome back. So uh, just to give you a little final update, really, on this one, because I think of, uh, there's uh, enough on this one for now. But, uh, yeah, just to give you a final update, there's uh, the uh, the edging stones, which should uh, give a bit of depth. Uh, I've also tried just putting, uh, as a temporary thing, really, and see how it looks uh, over time, uh, but a bit of a road surface there going under the tunnel. And there's a tunnel edge just to visualise the scene, really, a little bit more. There's that little cafe stroke um, information centre, tourist information centre. And what I've done as well is I thought maybe try um, opening it up this scene a little bit. So moving the uh, the other houses that were going up the hill, uh, having the smaller one here, which should just open that scene up a bit really, if you can see it. And then I thought with the other houses, with the sloping roofs, put those over there. So uh, it just uh, gives a bit more of a, an effect, really, that that hillside in the distance is going up gradually. OK, so uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll speak to you with another update soon. Bye for now.